I'm Sean Cole, this is The Sim Pit, and today we're here to get back to the HF8 gaming pad. Once again, this is version version three so far, having lots of fun with the pad. And, and this video here, I guess I'm kind of falling on the sword today. It's not so much that I feel that I made a mistake or did anything wrong, it's just that sometimes when we're testing uh, products, we don't have access to good instructions or any technical support or those things. We're just kind of doing it. So after my second video where we talked about updated settings and I gave you all the details of what everything did and all that information was spot on and really, really correct and will be beneficial to anybody. After that video or looking at the comments, there were some suggestions on how to do left and right separation. So separation was one of my only issues coming off of that with the gaming pad and something that I had hoped Next Level Racing would address in the future is the way I stated it. Well, looking at the comments, they suggested trying different things. And I went and looked at my settings and I'm like, oh, and I tried. And, and honestly, I still couldn't quite get it right. And then I went to the Next Level website, which they didn't have the HF8 on the website when I did the video, but now they do, including instructional videos. So when I look at the video instruction section, they actually have three different videos here on the HF8. And when I went to the PC one, I noticed that they actually had and went through all of their suggested settings for iRacing, funny enough. So I actually matched this video and went through it. And you can see after going through all of their settings on this very video that I had also done the exact same thing. So now when you look down here at ground effect and suspension, we have this diagonal of coverage. And when we go to the suspension, you can see the same thing. And there were slight changes in other things. So they had a little bit different gear shift they put everywhere brake they just put on the front too and and turned it on now i had turned that off they turned the volume down to 72 percent so i will put a link to that video in the description of this show but i did mimic their settings exactly and then i went back out on track which is what we're going to do right now because i just want you to see the difference and I, and it is i it's not that again i don't feel that i got it wrong it's just that it was information that i didn't have available at the time of review but based on the comments i kept looking i'm having fun with this pad i'm really enjoying the way it works and getting more out of it was really uh, beneficial to me in, in enjoying it. So it had me go back, and as soon as I got the results I wanted, I, I had to share them with you guys. So here we are back in the car, and now what we're really looking for is the left to right separation. And I can tell you the mix of volume that they did was also a better mix than I had, and it just, it, it, their division, and you can see somebody there at Next Level put some good time and effort into tuning that setup. So right now, as we hit those rumble strips right there, that's what we're gonna feel the most, or the most distinct version of the left and right separation. And there it is. I can totally feel right there on the left front pad was some really good, and I can tell on these front two is where I can tell the easiest Right there, I feel that on the left one. And that was on the, I am sorry, on the right one. That was on the left, that was on the right. There we go, left. This one, oh yeah, just totally rocking the right side, not the left. So the difference now is doing everything. Now I thought when I turned all of the lights on that it was just gonna do its own software splitting. And it wasn't doing that part, but once I got the right motors turned on, for the right effects, for the right moments, it, it really did take away that separation issue completely. And it's doing exactly what I want this thing to do. And 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 it really uh, is, is quite amazing. I'm still running it in conjunction with the butt kicker. I know another one of the comments that I did see was if I could choose this or a butt kicker, what would I choose? And, and my answer isn't as simple as just one over the other. It really does come down to what is your rig? What are you trying to achieve? But now that we're here and, we're, and we've got these settings, it really is the both. I mean, I don't know if I would pick one over the other. It might come down to what is my rig? What is my situation? But using them both, you know, for example, right here, putting it in neutral and revving the engine, the butt kicker is doing that. It's not the seated, the gaming, the HF8 gaming pad. So, and yet the butt kicker can't achieve 
the separation. So even when I run four butt kickers, it doesn't give me the same left and right sensation that I am now getting through this seat. This is a lot more direct. So one other thing I did want to test based on the comments, and I'm going to be honest with you, I have not even tried it yet. So I'm going to kind of fast forward time here. I wanted to get in the dirt. Someone asked, how does it work on the dirt? So now that we have everything working absolutely perfectly, we're going to go ahead and fire up some dirt driving. All right, so here we are in the dirt trucks just to see what it's like in the dirt. I have turned the butt kicker off because we still are on the review of the Next Level Racing Etch HF8 gaming pad. So I really wanted to isolate it and just feel it. But we have all those perfectly dialed in settings from the factory, I should say, or the suggested se settings from Next Level. I felt that gear click right there. So here we are. Not getting a lot of vibration right now out of the ground. Uh, there is a little humming going on, by the way. And I'm definitely feeling a little bit, but it's very mellow. It's not overly done, which, again, keep in mind the suspension. Whoa, whoa, don't hit the wall. Hard to drive at this funny angle, by the way. I'm a little compromised. So right now, I'm definitely feeling... There we go. We got the rev limiter. So we've got the, the expected effects. And I'm not really getting a lot of extra noise. So if you were expecting a whole lot of road noise because you're in off-road terrain, we're not getting that. Um, hold on, let's catch there. So, oh, interesting. So no, what's happened is right there, I felt the RPM spike when we got into the air more than anything else. Let's try to get off the gas next time we get in the air and see what happens here off this jump. I'm going to not gas it yeah definitely not getting a whole lot so i think because the suspension is so soft perhaps and soaking up the bumps that we're not actually feeling it in the chair as much as you might think or expect all right real quick just to make sure that we've checked everything i fired up the little midget sprint cars and we're here at the chili bowl actually and if i can get this thing out on the track really tricky car just to get on the track. So give me a moment here. We'll find out if there's any, I'm not getting any rumble right now at all, by the way. So, okay, here we go. We're on the track. And I think I'm getting uh, the start of some speed vibration, just uh, not ground texture, but speed. Uh, so as we get faster, definitely. Oh, oh. Yep, so pretty much the same thing. It's not really interpreter, interpreting the dirt any differently than, than asphalt because we weren't getting a lot of road noise off of just running down the ground without that speed effect. So not a lot of rumble, not a lot of movement from the suspension in that type of a manner. It seems like it's maybe for focusing on bigger hits than that. I'm not sure because even on the trucks at full jumping we weren't getting a lot of action so definitely not overly noisy i suppose the next test and i doubt we're going to get to it this will probably be the final version of this show but would be uh doing a rally game or something like that something with completely different physics but for i racing they're definitely not focusing on that as an output keep in mind these are also the output signals that are being used for motion simulators so if we over simulated the sensation of running on the dirt just for the sake of doing it, it would be extremely noisy for a motion simulator. So that could be part of it, that those things are tied together. Maybe someday we'll see more separation from the sim companies when it comes to output for exactly those reasons. So this will be the final version of our review on the Next Level Racing HF8 gaming pad. It just kept getting better and based on the comments and suggestions and more information, I just felt it was only right to bring it to you guys. So I hope you enjoyed that we keep giving you these updates and uh, hopefully you enjoyed the show. So give it a thumbs up if you did. Be sure to subscribe to the channel so you can find out when our next video comes out. Be sure to check us out at Simpit Live Friday mornings. That's tomorrow morning at 9 a.m. Pacific time. Simpit Live on Twitch for the Pit Stop where we will talk about sim racing news and everything going on in our favorite hobby, common interest, sport, that being sim racing. Thank you for watching. This is the Simpit. I'm Sean Cole, and I'll see you on the track.